Hello doctors, how are you? Today we are going to talk about very commonly used antibiotics, especially their mechanism of action. We will talk about clindamycin, erythromycin, rather full group of erythromycin and related drugs which is macrolides and chloramphenicol. We will re mainly today our focus is about the mechanism of action of clindamycin, erythromycin and chloramphenicol. This lecture will be in three steps. Step number one is that we should understand that what are the common things in mechanism of action of these three drugs. Number one, what are the common things in mechanism of action of these three drugs. Step number two is we will also learn what are important differences in their mechanism of action. And lastly, we will discuss in this lecture that related with the mechanism of action, what are the clinical implications? In clinical practice, what are the important points related with these drugs if you understand the mechanism of action exactly, right? So let's start with. Now, there are few things common. For example, if you ask someone, mechanism of action of clindamycin, macrolides and chloramphenicol, right? Every doctor will say all of them are protein synthesis inhibitor, right? This is common. All of them are protein synthesis inhibitor in the susceptible bacteria, right? Number two, all of them work on the ribosome because ribosomes are the molecular machines which synthesize the protein. Number three, all of them work on the 50S larger subunit of the ribosomes of susceptible bacteria. Number four, okay, I will write it down one by one. Number one thing, all of them are protein, yes, protein synthesis inhibitors, right? If we go into more detail, we go deeper, we know that all of them basically act on the, yes, ribosomes of susceptible bacteria. They work on ribosomes. And if you go into more detail, as we have discussed in previous lecture, previous lectures, that ribosomes have basically a smaller unit and larger unit and we know that some of the antibiotics they work on the smaller unit which is called 30s and some of the antibiotics mainly work on larger unit which is called yes 50s right now all three of them clindamycin erythromycin or macrolides chloramphenicol all of them work on the larger subunit that is 50S. Then we go into more detail that within the 50S, within the 50S, point number four is, good doctor will tell you within the 50S, there is a special function, catalytic function, right? That 50S unit has a special, yes, enzymatic activity, right? I will show you here. This is a specific enzyme, right? And this enzyme is basically present in 50S subunit. I'm just making it a very simple diagram. Suppose this is the enzyme. Now this enzyme, right? As most of the enzymes are proteins. This enzyme is not protein. That is why actually this is not really a protein. It is one of the ribosomal RNA. What is it? It is one of the ribosomal RNA. And that RNA is basically, with it, this is an RNA and this ribosomal RNA is 23S unit. What is this? 23S ribosomal RNA. This ribosomal RNA, 23S ribosomal RNA, 
this is yes a part of what it is a part of 50s subunit now basically this ribosome has a special catalytic activity it work like an enzyme because this ribosome which is 23s act as an enzyme right it is a very special exception that almost all enzymes are protein in nature but this is a special catalytic component present in 50s subunit and this catalytic component is consisting of 23s ribosomal rna right actually all three of the drugs work on this subunit right now so a good doctor will say that all these three drugs work on the pro work by reducing protein synthesis in the susceptible bacteria actually they work on the ribosomes of those bacteria and those ribosomes they specially work on 50s subunit and within the 50s unit they work on a special catalytic unit which is basically 23s ribosomal rna because this catalytic activity is in the ribosome so this is called ribozyme so what is it called ribozyme ribozyme right so we can say that all three of these drugs work on the 50s subunit right specially on ribozyme which is actually 23s ribosomal rna now as i will explain within few minutes that this ribosomal rna this ribosomal rna right or this ribozyme 23s ribosomal rna or ribozyme functionally functionally catalytically basically it makes a peptide bond between the two amino acid right so we call it peptidyl transferase this is also called peptidyl yes transferase peptidyl transferase now what you can say we can also say that clindamycin or macrolide which include erythromycin with erythromycin some new macrolide which are clarithromycin azithromycin right or some other also macrolide group all of it and chloramphenicol all of them actually work on a peptidyl transferase now i will go in reverse direction they work on peptidyl transferase which is also called ribozyme because it consists of a 23s ribosomal subunit present in the 50s component of the ribosomes of prokaryotes prokaryotes susceptible prokaryotes and inhibit their protein synthesis now up to now everything is common right that all three of the drugs work all these six steps or points are common all of them are protein synthesis inhibitors all of them work on the susceptible bacteria ribosome all of them act on the 50s subunit all of them act on the 50s subunit special point which is 23s ribosomal rna which is also called ribozyme and which is functional functionally peptidyl transferase now very briefly i will explain there how the peptidyl transferase work how the peptidyl transferase work very briefly i will explain it right then i will explain all of these drugs are working on peptidyl transferase but their action is little different and if you become clear about that then you will be able to understand that clinically why these drugs have competitive inhibition 
For example, if you have given the patient clindamycin, after that you add erythromycin, erythromycin will not work well. Or if you have previously given the patient erythromycin and still erythromycin is present in the patient and you add clindamycin for more action, you will not get the more action. Because as I will explain, all three of these drugs, clindamycin, macrolide and chloramphenicol, there is no clinical situation in which all of them are given together. Right? Because mechanism of action is such that they inhibit the action of each other. We will see, I will explain in detail. And with that, you will also understand what is post-antibiotic effect. I will explain what is that. We will also understand how these drugs can produce cross resistance. For example, if a staphylococcus is resistant to erythromycin, right? Due to ribosomal alteration, target erythromycin target domain in the ribosome is altered we will see that in such bacteria on such bacteria even clindamycin will fail or if ribosomal alteration is such that clindamycin cannot work on bacteria right clindamycin has developed resistance due to ribosomal 50s subunit alteration i will explain what kind of alteration if bacteria has done that alteration and if clindomycin is failing we will understand then why erythromycin will also fail right so let's first of all understand peptidyl transferase what it is doing so i will draw it here this is 30s subunit right what is this 50s subunit and as I have explained previously that this area is called A site, A site, this area is called P site and this is called E site and here is a special tunnel going out which is called exit tunnel, right? Now, this is 30s unit, that is 50s unit and here is your messenger RNA, 3 prime end and 5, sorry, 5 prime end we put it here, 5 prime end and this is tail end which is also called 3 prime end. This is messenger RNA and these are your codons, right? Now, I'm going to just remember why we call it is A site and why we call it P site. Actually here is the transfer RNA which is carrying, which is carrying what? It is carrying, yes, recently formed oligopeptide. Recently formed oligopeptide which is also called nascent polypeptide chain. Right? This is being formed. For example, this is amino acid number 1, this is amino acid number 2, this is 3, this is 4 and now there is incoming amino acid on this transfer RNA and this is new amino acid. Right? And this transfer RNA where if with these messenger RNA codons, anti-codon will be complementary and it will be carrying amino acid. Now, this amino acid and this peptide chain, they should be connected with each other. They should be connected with each other. An enzyme will connect them that will help to elongate this chain. That will be the first step if we connect this that we are doing transpeptidation because there is transpeptidase, what that enzyme is doing here. Okay, I will remove these. You just remember on A site, we have amino acyl transfer RNA or incoming new transfer RNA with a new amino acid at P site. What is there? Okay, I will put it here A site. This is P site and this is E. At P site, we have transfer RNA which is carrying the short peptide chain, right? Nascently formed 
polypeptide right and a site p site e site is from where eventually the transfer rna which has given up its what is this amino acid that will exit so this is now what is and where is your ribozyme actually here is your ribozyme right and this is basically come back here ribozyme which is structurally consisting of 23 s ribosomal rna of the 50 s subunit of the bacterial ribosome and functionally this ribozyme is peptidyl transferase we are now going to focus how this ribozyme or 23 s ribosomal rna or peptidyl transferase how it works normally and how these drugs inhibit just look at it what it is what it is this is now ribozyme and this ribozyme okay this is ribozyme i will draw it here just to explain it clearly this is ribozyme right now it has two special domain special domain one domain is going to work now here one domain is going to work on amino acyl transfer rna other domain is functional domain is working on short peptide chain now this is our what 23 s ribosomal rna or ribozyme or peptidyl transferase how it is working okay if i am the peptidyl transferase i am having one this side suppose this is the domain functional domain which is attaching with the what is this incoming new transfer rna with the new with the new amino acid we call it peptidyl we call it amino acyl transfer rna and other domain which is attached with the transfer rna which is carrying the short peptide chain which is recently formed nascent peptide oligopeptide unit this domain is working in which area yes in p site and this is working on a site right now we can say if i am the Okay, if I'm the peptidyl transferase, my this unit is working on amino acyl transferase, uh, amino acyl transfer RNA, and my this unit is working on working on peptidyl transfer RNA. So this unit is mainly working on A site, and this is mainly working on P site. Now, what is the function of these two domains? What is the function of these two domains the function of these two domain is that they will orient these amino acid in such a way yes that they help in formation of a peptide bond with, between new coming amino acid and oligopeptide chain so there this will lead to the formation of a what is this peptide bond so what it has done there was one this side so this chain oligopeptide chain or nascent and nascently formed nascent or recently formed or nascent peptide chain and the new incoming amino acid they are oriented with each other and they are connected with each other right when this bond is formed this is one function this is only one function which peptidyl transferase is doing which ribozyme is doing, which 23S subunit is doing. This is one function. Second function it will do that once preformed chain and the new amino acid are connected, then this will dislodge it from what is this? From which transfer RNA? Peptidyl transfer RNA. This chain will be dislodged. Okay, I will draw it separately so it becomes more clear to you.
so there was a short chain right and this was new amino acid first of all this enzyme ribozyme it made a bond between them now what happened amino acid number 1 2 3 and 4 they were already part of the chain now fifth new amino acid of fifth amino acid also connected with the chain after that it will dislodge the chain from transfer rna present in p site it will dislodge when it will dislodge this chain will be transferred at transfer rna of amino acid position so what will happen that this whole chain will transfer actually there and you will see how we can show that from here chain has been transferred there so second work is now four number amino acid is here i will again make it more clear there is a bond between them there is a bond then four number then bond then three number then suppose two number then one number now this chain from here has been transferred to the new amino acid that is why it is called peptidyl transferase it has transferred the short peptide chain and the new amino acid step number one peptidyl transferase or ribozyme will make a bond between these two and after that this chain will be transferred there so this has done peptidyl transferase activity which had two components number one peptide bond formation between short peptide chain and the new amino acid and second function which has done once this bond is formed it will evolve it will detach it will remove this chain and transfer it to the new point after that so what have happened up to now number one this process is called transpeptidation what is it called transpeptidation once transpeptidation has been done after that this complex what is this ribosomal unit 30s and 50s they will move one step towards the 3s subunit and they will move this whole complex of ribosome will move one codon down the messenger rna towards its 3 end and this movement of that is called translocation translocation and once ribosomal translocation when ribosomal translocation has happened then what will happen yeah, when ribosome have moved there then actually this this will shift to p site and this previously amino acyl transfer rna which had received a short peptide chain this because ribosome have moved one step ahead it will come in p area right and it will convert into peptidyl this will convert into peptidyl transfer rna and because peptide chain has been transferred to that this rna will come to exit site and eventually fall out right and because this has shifted over here so this area will become empty what i want to say that very briefly that 30s and 50s after tr translocation what will happen after translocation when it has gone one step down that messenger rna with short peptide from here has come over here and this area is empty and there is the transfer rna sorry transfer rna which was having short peptide chain right that has come over here five peptide five amino acid right and the, which was previously here this has moved into exit place empty place and a site is empty for the upcoming and other amino acid or another transfer rna with a new amino acid or new amino acyl transfer rna will come here and this cycle will repeatedly go so step by step codon by codon amino acid by amino acid peptide chain will be elongated right so to add one amino acid one cycle is completed 
this molecular cycle is first of all to add one amino acid new amino acid transfer rna come to a site new amino acid transfer rna come to a site next tra peptide ion transferase makes a bond between the pre existing short peptide chain amino acid bond with the new amino acid right after that detach the short peptide chain from the peptide ion transfer rna and transfer this peptide chain to the new amino acid right so this has done transpeptidation after that ribosomal translocation one step down and this will eventually come to this site and exit out and this one will come over here and this will be empty for the next upcoming so this cycle will be repeated again and again transpeptidation and then translocation ribosomal translocation transpeptidation followed by followed by trans, uh, uh, ribosomal translocation and every time the cycle is repeated chain will be elongated peptide chain be, will be elongated by one amino acid so this is said to be peptide chain elongation elongation now listen what really happens all three of these drugs up to now the things are common all three of these drugs clindamycin all macrolides and chloramphenicol all of them basically produce dysfunction in peptide ion transfer rather peptide ion transferase activity and translocation activity again i will repeat all three of them first this is the last common step after that i will tell you how these drugs differ at in their mechanism of action but all of them up to now have everything common all of these drugs basically act on the 50s subunit they basically act on 50s subunit which point at the ribozyme which is 23s subunit all these drugs bind over here and they disrupt the function of what is this peptidyl transferase when peptidyl transferase is not working then peptide bond is not formed peptide chain is not shifted to the new and then ribosome does not translocate if transpeptidation is not done the next step translocation fail when transpeptidation and translocation fail chain will not be elongated so a good doc very good doctor will say that all these drugs clindamycin macrolide like erythromycin clarithromycin azithromycin and chloramphenicol which is not macrolide all these drugs basically inhibit the protein synthesis by inhibiting the chain early chain elongation process all these drugs what they are doing up to now the common thing lindamycin macrolides and chloramphenicol all of them when they are working on the susceptible bacteria they reduce the protein synthesis how they reduce the protein synthesis by disrupting the functions of prokaryotic ribosomes in susceptible bacteria where in the ribosome they work they work on the bigger subunit which is 50s subunit on the 50s subunit exactly where they work they work on the 23s ribosomal rna which is having enzymatic activity which is that is why that is also called ribozyme and that enzymatic activity is peptide bond formation and peptide chain transfer so that is why enzymatic activity of 23s rna or ribozyme is functionally catalytically it is peptidyl transferase activity if peptidyl transferase is done function is done properly only then then what will happen when transpeptidation is done only then translocation will occur right only then translocation will occur now all of these drugs basically inhibit the function of peptidyl transferase primarily so we can say they inhibit the function of what is this common chain elongation all of them eventually inhibit trans peptidation and or plus trans okay i will write it here trans location right due to this reason re, result what will happen 
what will be reduced eventually if transpeptidation is reduced and translocation is reduced that will result into what okay if transpeptidation is reduced automatically translocation will be not done if translocation fails that will lead to point number 10 early chain elongation is fail early chain elongation fails and if early chain elongation fail then protein synthesis will be inhibited then protein synthesis will be inhibited so 10 points are common in their action all these three group of drugs calendomycin macrolides and chloramphenicol they have 10 points common after that i am coming to differences what are 10 points common all of them reduce protein synthesis by a susceptible bacteria by acting on the ribosome especially on the 50s larger subunit to be very specific on 23s ribosomal rna which is all also called ribozyme due to its catalytic activity and catalytic activity is peptidyl transferase which is making a bond between the amino acid on yes acyl transferase and other amino, amino acid on nascent uh, peptide chain peptidyl transferase and if peptidyl transferase is inhibited then transpeptidation is not done translocation of ribosome does not occur ribosome is unable to move on messenger rna unable to read it further and eventually early chain elongation will fail which will result into protein synthesis inhibition if this is clear if this is clear now i will explain how these three group of antibiotics on their action how they slightly differ and because they slightly differ in their mechanism of action right in transpeptidation and translocation that differences and that understanding will help you to understand that how these drugs produce in competitive inhibition how some of these drugs produce post antibiotic effect how some of these drugs lead to cross resistance let's go to that now first of all let me explain it their differences right let me explain if these 10 points are clear to your mind let me explain exactly on the ribozyme how these drugs work right now i will make a simple diagram but i will make three diagrams in one one diagram first diagram i will show the action of clindamycin right and in second diagram i will show the action of macrolides in third diagram i will show the action of chloramphenicol and you will become crystal clear about their function uh, their mechanism of action and their differences also so let's suppose clindamycin action first of all this is 30s yes this is 50s right and how in a site we have what Five prime and three prime. And A site we have peptidyl, sorry, amino acyl transfer RNA. At P site we are having what is this? Peptidyl transfer RNA, right? And here are your actually codons. Okay. Now here was, here is what? Now you will tell me what is it? This is peptidyl transferase. Molecular structure, what it is? 23S ribo 23S ribosomal RNA, or we call it ribozyme, this green, or we call it, or we call it peptidyl transferase. And normally how it works? It has two domains, one domain has to work here, another domain has to work on that. Now, clindamycin, clinda, mycin, remember clindamycin is linda, linda is what? Linda means a beautiful girl, clindamycin is a beautiful girl, 
right now this beautiful girl clindamycin how does it work it it actually attaches with this is a beautiful girl clindamycin yes what are these okay these are her very silky hair and she is yes she is sitting on okay i will she is sitting on what 50s ribosome component functional component which is 23s ribosome and she is sitting over here and her legs one leg is going towards which side p side and other leg is going towards a side a side right and if clindamycin binds on the 50s subunit of ribosomes of susceptible bacteria then clindamycin like a beautiful girl will sit on the top of what is this ribozyme peptidyl transfer rna clindamycin clinda easy way to remember linda beautiful girl she will sit over here and she has long beautiful graceful legs and these legs she will push it down and now she has do you think peptidyl trans transferase it has you remember it was having two what was this domain one domain was supposed to work on a site a site and other domain was supposed to work on p site p site one was first was supposed to work on amino acid transfer rna on the new and other was supposed to work on peptide peptidyl transfer rna and if it was able to interact properly only then this will make a bond now clindamycin is sitting like that if it is sitting at the top right this is what so it was having two functional unit one was for the binding with the new what was this and other was binding with other now if linda sits over here this will push its to this drug active component will actually interfere with what they will extend to a site and p site and now these active units are not able to work on their substrates these were the substrates right over which it work these these are the substrates where this could work and make a what make a peptide bond and then transpeptidation if clindamycin like a beautiful girl sitting on the top of what is this ribozyme right and it inserts its legs active domains its active domain of the drug they are inserted over here do you think now transpeptidation can occur no if this bond cannot form peptide chain cannot be transferred it means clindamycin led led to the failure of transpeptidation and if transpeptidation has not occurred of course you understand what is the other thing which will fail translocation and if clindamycin is binding with peptidyl transferase or 23s ribosomal rna or with the ribozyme if it bind in such a way that it actively block disturb the a site and p site in such a way that these substrates cannot work with the catalytic units so transpeptidation will fail then subsequently translocation will fail and eventually chain elongation will fail and if, ch if ch chains cannot be elongated how proteins will be formed so what will happen number 1 protein synthesis will be reduced and if any proteins are produced they will be distorted they will not be having the complete amino acid set so we say this is how exactly clindamycin leads to what protein synthesis inhibition right right and that results in bacterial proteins which are reduced 
and reduced in amount there is quantitative problem along with that there is qualitative problem and whatever they are produced they are not working well right and that leads to many effects one of the effect is that bacteria is now unable to produce proteins to multiply so bacteria is unable to multiply then what will happen we will say clindamycin is acting as a bacteriostatic drug that drug is lead to the inhibition of proliferation or multiplication of the bacteria but if more dose is higher if clindamycin concentration is higher then on special by some of the bacteria it inhibits not only those proteins which are required for bacterial proliferation this also inhibits those proteins which are required for survival of the bacteria and such drastic action may lead to bactericidal action so generally speaking protein synthesis inhibitors are considered bacteriostatic but if clindamycin is in some bacteria in heavier doses it can lead to even bactericidal action now here i will tell you one more thing when clindamycin is working like this bacteria are unable to produce proteins let's suppose we are giving this now listen carefully let's suppose if clindamycin is given to a patient who is having toxic shock syndrome toxin now what is toxic shock syndrome toxin let's come here suppose this is a special variant of staph aureus now this is this staph aureus can produce a toxin which which is called toxic shock syndrome toxin now this toxic shock syndrome toxin actually is commonly produced by some strains of staphylococci and some strains of streptococci and these toxins toxic shock syndrome toxin this toxin is basically a what is this toxin this is a super antigen super antigen super antigen is an antigen produced by a bacteria here in our example toxic shock syndrome toxin is super antigen what is super antigen super antigen yes super antigen is basically a type of antigen which can activate massively our immune system they will activate many unrelated clones of t cells and those t cells will activate lot of immune system uh, activity so super antigens i will explain in some later lecture that super antigens basically act on the antigen presenting cell like macrophages and on the t helper cell and non specifically activate them right and when lot of for example if in my body such staphylococci or, or streptococcus is present and this is able to produce toxic shock syndrome toxin then what will happen that this toxin will activate many of my macrophages and t helper cell and this massive inappropriate activation of the immune system will produce massive concentrations of cytokines and those cytokines will eventually lead to shock cardiovascular collapse right with multi organ failure right and we say this super antigen or toxic shock syndrome toxin is basically has produced yes again has produced massive inappropriate activation of the immune system resulting into massive productions of cytokines which eventually lead to multi, multi organ failure and cardiovascular collapse and patient may die in a very short time now toxins are this this is exotoxin this super antigen or exotoxin is basically a protein and we see that clindamycin can in on the susceptible bacteria not only it is bacteriostatic or bactericidal even it can reduce the production of toxins if patient is suffering from toxic shock syndrome or you are expecting patient is going into that condition 
along with beta lactamases or vancomycin we must give clindamycin at least for first 48 to 72 hours and this clindamycin will specially work on reducing toxin production by inhibiting the protein synthesis right and prevent the patient uh, from disastrous multi-organ failure your this decision that in a patient the staphylococci or streptococci where you suspect patient is going into toxic shock syndrome please add clindamycin along with the beta lactam uh, beta lactam antibiotics or vancomycin so that while beta lactams are killing the bacteria at least clindamycin immediately start reducing the production of toxins and in appropriate acti massive activation of immune cell is reduced and toxin production is reduced and multi-organ failure is eventually prevented so your this decision to use clindamycin can be life saving in the patients with toxic shock syndrome problem this is one thing secondly another toxin i give you example some of the staphylococci they produce a very very dangerous toxin and this toxin is called alpha toxin right some staphylococci can produce alpha toxin then streptococci can produce then clostridium what is another clostridium which produces very dangerous toxin uh, perfringes now if you are having such ki kind of staphylococcus or streptococcus or clostridium perfringes which is able to produce very destructive tissue damaging what toxins like alpha like alpha toxin which dissolve into our membrane tissue membrane and cell membranes are perforated because alpha toxin which is produced by staphylococci specifically alpha toxin if are produced they act on our cell membranes and produce pore uh, mem membrane will have multiple pores right and when membranes are massively disrupted that may end up into necrotizing fasciitis or gas gangrene necrotizing fasciitis or gas gangrene both of them if not rapidly managed are very very dangerous diseases which can be fatal which can be fatal and in this condition also in such condition also we along with other antibiotics we can use clindamycin to inhibit the production of alpha toxins so that necrotizing fasciitis or gas gangrene progression is reduced right so by this action what i have told you that clindamycin is very important in reducing the what reducing the toxin production and for example which toxins toxic shock syndrome toxin and alpha toxin by staphylococci is that clear so this was one clinical correlate now we come to yeah this is very big problem uh, you asked very well very good question that if we are giving beta lactams which are able to kill the bacteria right or we are giving vancomycin or we are giving some other drug right which is related in killing the bacteria but if you don't give now listen very carefully if i am the patient who is having necrotizing fasciitis let's suppose due to very dangerous strain of staphylococcus and the staphylococcus which i am having that is producing alpha toxins and that is producing uh, necrotizing fasciitis rapidly spreading muscular, uh, muscular compartment gangrene and tissue damage and fascia damage right now this is very important clinical point which i am going to elaborate you already understand if we give clindamycin that will inhibit the production of alpha toxin but there is another thing if you don't give clindamycin of course production of toxins will be will not be reduced but if you are giving beta lactams alone you know what beta lactams do very unfortunate thing 
beta lactam given alone can actually amplify the production of this toxin alpha toxin or even fluoroquinolone given alone can amplify the production of alpha toxin so this will be very unfortunate if some good doctor in a patient of what is this necrotizing fasciitis he gives beta lactam antibiotics of course some bacteria will be killed but many of the bacteria before dying will produce massive amount of alpha toxins and that will further enhance the problem so what we can say this alpha toxin right clindamycin inhib inhibits its production beta lactams actually increases their production beta lactams and fluoroquinolones they also moderately increase the production but beta lactam mass drastically increase the production of alpha toxin so it's very important that along with such drugs in necrotizing fasciitis or alpha toxin producing staphylococci infection you must give clindamycin to reduce the production of toxins is it clear right now let's go to another point so we have talked about that clindamycin can produce the can lead to proteins synthesis inhibition and this protein synthesis inhibition will eventually lead to reduced proteins and distorted protein which will result in many actions one action i told you it it may reduce proliferation of bacteria bacteriostatic action in heavy doses in some bacteria it kills them bactericidal action and very important one action by reducing toxin production was what that it reduces toxin production and this function is specially very useful in patient with toxic shock syndrome and also patient with uh, such staphylococcal infections which produce alpha toxin is it clear now okay i will go in further detail of clindamycin and their action but before i go what do you think i go directly to the clindamycin and further mechanism of action or compare the three antibiotic section i compare now right Th then i will go into yes we will talk about that later let me compare the compare and contrast the mechanism of action of these three antibiotics right let's come back to our clinda da linda the beautiful lady she is sitting on the top of what is this 23s ribosomal subunit and with this active domain this lady has two beautiful legs and she is kicking at a site and p site and does not allow transpeptidation and translocation and eventually chain elongation fails and that lead to protein synthesis inhibition now let's compare it with okay i will write it here this was kalenda this is kalenda mycin now let's compare it with the macrolide function okay basic we are drawing the amino acid oh sorry uh, ribosome 30s 50s and here is your messenger rna with 5 prime end and 3 prime end and this is this area is going to be a a site and this area is going to be p site and this is e site and here is your what is this exit tunnel tunnel and you remember that here was what was there amino acid transfer rna and here was peptidyl transfer rna codon anti codon interaction and this is new incoming what amino acid this was previously made chain and here was your what was it ribo it is also actually it is 23s ribosomal rna which is actually called ribozyme but it act as a it act as a 
peptidyl transferase. Now it is supposed to make a chain in a connection between the two, right? By these two domain, one domain acting here, other domain acting here, and it, it should make a bond. Wow. Now here, macrolide come. Macrolide may be erythromycin, an example of old macrolide and new are I will just write down two commonly used azithromycin, clarithromycin, clarithromycin, and another new commonly used is azithromycin, azithromycin, right? Now, these are macrolide. How do macrolide work? Actually, macrolide also work on the same peptidyl transferase on the same ribozyme on the same 23S ribosomal RNA. But look here, it is the macrolide, the lady macrolide sitting over here. Right? She is sitting over here, but what she has done? She is facing to which side? P side. And her both legs are in the P side. And she is kicking there on the P side. And she puts also one hand into exit tunnel. Right? What is this? This is macrolides, erythromycin. Macrolides. So look, the common thing is, now if it is so what will happen? This area will not function. This domain will specially not function. And this, if P site domain of the peptidyl transfer transferase is not functioning, then naturally, do you think peptidyl, this oligopeptide can be linked with the new amino acid? No. Right? And the result will be number one. Not only Yes, this drug. What was the name of this drug? Macrolides. macrolides. Right? And these macrolides are also attaching to the 23S subunit like that. But they are mainly acting on the P site. They are mainly interfering with the P site. And if they are acting on the P site, what will be the result? Peptidyl transfer RNA will be what will happen? It's, it will be distorted at its position and there will be failure of transpeptidation. And secondly, it is also blocking the exit tunnel. Both of these functions will lead to failure of translocation, ribosomal translocation. And if ribosomal translocation fail, chain elongation fail. And if chain elongation fail, protein synthesis fail. Right? Now, we can say that macrolide or thromycin, even though like clindamycin, they work on the peptidyl transferase, but they mainly interfere with the P site and also, so they lead to failure of transpeptidation and they also block the exit tunnel from where the newly found peptide chain will eventually go out. All this molecular distortions will result in failure of transpeptidation, failure of ribosomal translocation and both these phenomena will end up into failure of protein synthesis and bacteriostatic in most cases and in some bacteria in very high doses these drugs especially newer antibiotics might produce bactericidal action. Is that right? So now you can see the difference in them. Right? But let me explain action of chloramphenicol also and then I will, as you can compare uh, all this, right? Now we come over here, the action of chloramphenicol. What is this? 30S, here it is, 50S, your messenger RNA with 5 prime end, 3 prime end, what are these? Codons at A site and P site which are actually, A site and P site are actually the part of 50S mainly and here is 
peptidyl transferase, a trans peptidyl transfer RNA with recently formed oligopeptide or nascent polypeptide, and here is your new RNA. Here there must be your strong man peptidyl transfer or peptidyl transferase or ribozyme or 23S ribosome and here it is attached and its main action should be again to connect. Here another lady come and said chloramphenicol okay. But this time the both legs of her are on which side? A side. Both active units. Now look at it. What she will be doing now? It will be different than others. We say saw clindamycin also attached with the ribozyme or peptidyl transferase but it disturbed both A and P side clindamycin. What was this? Macrolides, they also bind with peptidyl transferase, but mainly they work on the P side and also on the exit tunnel. Right? Then what is this? This is your chloramphenicol. And chloramphenicol, these ladies can be angry why we have not drawn the mascara. Okay. So now this lady sitting on peptidyl transferase attaching with that and its disruptive domain specially disrupt the function at A site where amino acyl transfer RNA come with the new newly incoming amino acid. So, so what will happen there is a, in the presence of chloramphenicol A site will not function well amino acyl transferase will be dos, uh, disturbed sterically at its position and there will be no bond formation between what? Yes, between transfer, a peptidyl transfer RNA and amino acyl transfer RNA and peptide chain, a transpeptidation will not be done. It means the bond between a short peptide chain made and the incoming new amino acid bond will not be formed and this will not be transferred. Of course other things are same. You know now more than me. What will happen there? Transpeptidation fail, transpeptidation fail, chain elongation fail. But it can, this, what was this drug? Yes, chloram phenicol. This mainly act, it also work on the attach on the what is this ribozyme or peptidyl transferase but it mainly disrupt the act on the a site and either if peptid if amino acyl transfer RNA is already there with the new amino acid it will disturb its steric position or actually many times this lady will kick so much that even incoming amino acyl transfer RNA will not be allowed to come or may be kicked out. That will be kicked out. Of course, result is what? Failure of transpeptidation, failure of trans ribosomal transmutation, failure of early chain elongation, failure of protein synthesis inhibition. Right? Chloramphenicol work over there. Here I want to tell something about chloramphenicol, you know. Chloramphenicol is now not so abundantly used. Previously it was abundantly used and chloramphenicol is very broad spectrum. It kills gram positive as well as gram negative. It also kills many aerobics as well as anaerobics. But now its use especially in the first world is reduced significantly. There are multiple reasons. One reason is that there is a lot of resistance against it. But real the master reason is chloramphenicol can inhibit Yes, can produce myelosuppression. It can lead to suppression of bone marrow. It can lead to bone marrow failure. Especially it can produce aplastic anemia and this can be fatal. Now this bone marrow failure, most of the cases is dose related. More the dose of and duration of what? 
chloramphenicol more chances that we will end up with aplastic anemia. But in some patients there is idiosyncratic reaction to the chloramphenicol resulting in bone marrow failure and especially aplastic anemia. When I say idiosyncratic it means many things but one of the thing is that even very little dose even given once can produce it. For example in very very rare cases even when chloramphenicol eye drops are used, idiosyncratically, these few molecules of chloramphenicol which absorb, they can interact the, between the immune system and bone marrow cells and might, very rarely, might lead to aplastic anemia. Right? That is why presently we are avoiding chloramphenicol. One reason is lot of resistance has developed against it, but more important reason is there is the risk of myelosuppression or bone marrow suppression, especially aplastic anemia. And another reason is in younger children, it can lead to gray baby syndrome. I will not go into detail of this syndrome, but just you should know that chloramphenicol not only, only act on the susceptible bacterial ribosomes, but chloramphenicol can cross the outer membrane of our mitochondria, especially in babies. Mitochondria and if chloramphenicol enter in our mitochondria, you know, our mitochondria are basically energy producing bacteria. Mitochondria are energy producing bacteria. So they are having ribosomes which are similar to bacteria. And if chloramphenicol enter into those uh, mitochondria of the baby, then mitochondrial failure will eventually result into gray baby syndrome. But here you might be thinking why clindamycin or macrolide do not produce gray baby syndrome. Luckily, these two drugs don't, un, they are unable to significantly permeate the outer membrane of the mitochondria. So they don't enter into our mitochondria. So they don't produce gray baby syndrome. Is that right? Now we come back. Let's talk about, once we are very clear about, briefly we can say all these drugs, clindamycin, erythromycin and chloramphenicol act on the, yes, peptidyl transferase action of the 50S subunit. All of them inhibit transpeptidation and eventually translocation resulting into failure of chain elongation and protein synthesis is inhibited. But difference is that, that clindamycin uh, produces dysfunction at A site and P site both. Macrolide produce dysfunction mainly at the P site and also close the exit tunnel, right? And they also kick, sometimes this lady is kicking so much, this lady might be erythromycin or, or azithromycin or clarithromycin. This lady also kicks so much, but they will not dislodge what is this? Amino acyl transfer RNA. This lady might dislodge peptidyl transfer RNA prematurely. Right, that will also disrupt the protein synthesis function. Then we came to the action of the chloramphenicol. It also work on the ribozyme. It also work on the 23S ribosomal RNA. It also work on what is this uh, uh, ribozyme. But but its main active domains are disrupting A site. So minor cell transfer RNA site is disturbed, and that lead to either they, these minor cell transfer RNA orientation is not well or it is not allowed to come or it comes and it is kicked out, right? So it will eventually, this will also lead to protein synthesis inhibition. So now you know, what are the common thing in the mechanism of action of clindamycin, erythromycin and chloramphenicol and what are the differences in their action? Clindamycin disrupting peptidyl transfer transferase and disturbing A and P both side. Macrolides disturbing peptidyl transferase and specially disturbing what is this P site and also closing the exit tunnel and mainly that not only result in transpeptidation also failure in translocation and this is mainly uh, attaching to the same way but mainly disrupting A site is it clear now we can see one thing I will come to the concept of competitive inhibition you know ladies so well. If one of them has occupied the place, will it allow the others to have action? 
it will do a, it will do its best to kick the ass of the other lady right so if you are uh, you have already given a person suppose clindamycin and you think to increase the action to increase the effect on bacteria bacteria are also susceptible if you think to erythromycin and you think if you give macrolide clindamycin and macrolide together will increase the function increase the clinical uh, results answer is no if clindamycin is already there at the ribosome the binding because all of them bind on the same place if one of the lady is present first then it is becomes very difficult for the next lady to attack the same place so what i'm saying because of the yes partially overlapping sites of binding of these drugs these three drugs these all three ladies are sitting on the they are sitting on special domain of what is this peptidyl transferase now because all of them bind with peptidyl transferase even though structurally these three drugs are very different but at molecular level their site of bindings are partially overlapping and if one of them is present then other will find it difficult so it is up to you that if you have given clindamycin you cannot enhance the uh, micro antimicrobial action by giving macrolide or if macrolide has first given do you think uh, after that if you give clindamycin action will increase no so it is just lady like behavior that uh, they refuse to share. once they have a place in the peptidyl transferase they refuse to share right but about ladies i will tell you something someone said it that 80% of the women compete for the 20% of the men who have strong hierarchy position hierarchical uh, position among the men's world men who are having higher status in their chosen field 80% of the women are competing for those 20% of the men you know what is the result that in successful men all women no woman likes polygamy but every woman like hypergamy polygamy mean or polygyny mean one man with multiple women or one wife or two wife or few girls friend so what happens 80% of the men are left with 20% women's interest and 20% of the men have 80% of the women interest so even though no woman in the world would like to share her man still many women share right that is why many married men are having girlfriends right and girlfriend knows that he is married why this happens because women are not i don't think that women are greedy and want to go to more successful man actually this is biologically determined and evolutionarily uh, evolution is involved into it what woman is unconsciously thinking of her children she wants to bear the children from a man who has a strong status in the society more respect more resources and more power right and for that thing she becomes somehow willing to share the man but already who is there does not allow the next to come but next may come sneakily and attach with the system and hope that one day she will be able to kick the first woman and some of them become tolerant but eventually this behavior is only for one reason you know why because women are looking for strong status man where they perceive they can provide more provisions and protection for their children because women also always need for their children more provisions and more protection but i'm not talking about the gold diggers this is general behavior right of course some people will be very angry with me but just study the society and see what's happening right 80% of the men are left with 20% of the women that is why in every other social media things they are telling how to uh, uh, get the attraction from the women but the most powerful thing which 
attracts the woman is not six ab, abs or six packs. They don't go for ultimate fitness of a man. There are very few women who would like to go for Mr. World muscular man. Because some super fit men, unfortunately, they are the bodyguards of very rich men. So I don't know from where all this talk, these drugs have heard. So clindamycin, erythromycin and chloramphenicol, all of them bind at the overlapping binding site and they are competitively inhibited to each other. If one is binding, then it makes it difficult for the next to bind. That is why there is no clinical situation in which they are these three drugs, forget about chloramphenicol, it is a very uh, dangerous drug, right? Uh, let's come to erythromycin and clindamycin. That erythromycin and clindamycin, even though being very effective drugs, but if in patient bacteria is susceptible to susceptible to clindamycin and erythromycin both you have to choose one either you give your patient clindamycin or you give your patient erythromycin that will be determined by many factors here a little talk about erythromycin and new macrolide like clarithromycin and azithromycin i'm not teaching you macrolide right now but just few words Clarithromycin or azithromycin, these are newer macrolides, younger macrolides, their age is less, age means at the time they came into clinical practice, right? They are now getting more popular than erythromycin. You know why? Because number one, they are acid stable, acid stable, it means that from gastrointestinal system, they will not be destroyed by gastric acid, right, or peptic acid, and their oral bioavailability will be more. And due to this reason, erythromycin is given in enteric coated tablets. This is one reason. Number two, new clarithromycin and azithromycin, of course, they are acid stable, which result into more bioavailability, bioavailability, on less dose, you can get more bioavailability then another thing they are longer half-life right I will, and they have better what tissue penetrations tissue penetration and they are also having less they, have, they are better tolerated better tolerated so these are just few points that clarithromycin and azithromycin and erythromycin all of them work almost in the same way they bind with the 23S ribosomal RNA or ribozyme or peptidyl transfer RNA transferase or peptidyl transferase and mainly in, uh, produce dysfunction at P site and exit tunnel and resulting into transpeptidation failure and translocation failure, chain elongation failure and protein synthesis inhibition resulting into what? Bacteriostatic action and in some cases bactericidal. Now, another question, competitive inhibition, we know the result. That all three group of drugs bind on overlapping site of susceptible bacteria's target. Because of sharing of the target, right, if one is already reached the target, then other is, for others it becomes difficult to bind. So that is why they are not given together. I have also told you the clindamycin special role in reduced toxin production that is this of course action is also derived from failure of transpeptidation and translocation and chain elongation and failure of bacteria to produce proteins including failure of producing exotoxins or failure of producing toxic shock syndrome toxin or alpha toxin right then we uh, let me talk about cross resistance or resistance okay this concept is very important i will resistance concept i will explain in a simple way actually there are multiple mechanisms the multiple mechanisms of resistance 
developed by the bacteria against these drugs. But right now, I will only talk about mechanism of resistance involving the changes in yes changes in their binding site at 50s subunit including that 23s ribosomal rna or ribozyme or peptidyl transferase what really happens there are other mechanisms also but i'm talking about this yes this was what by now you should know peptidyl transferase now even though peptidyl transferase is mainly ribosomal rna but ribosomes are made of rna and protein both ribosomes are made of rna and proteins both so they do have some proteins also for example this is some protein surrounding the ribosomal rna right now if this protein become mutant uh, i should say surrounding protein become mutant in a bacteria then what will happen these antibiotics will not be able to bind properly to 23s ribosomal rna because that 23s ribosomal rna is not in space it is surrounded by ribosomal proteins and at some specific points okay we say this uh, protein becomes mutant and if it is mutant then these drugs cannot bind there this can lead to resistant strain of bacteria right then another is that in 23s ribosome within 23s 23s ribosomal rna there is a specific adenine if that adenine site is adenine this is adenine if adenine site is altered for example it develops a mutation again these drugs will not be able to bind and resistance will be produced now either surrounding protein alteration or 23s ribosomal adenine alteration genetic alteration mutations both of them will result into disrupted attachment or binding of the drugs to the target biological targets or molecular targets that will lead to the resistance by the bacteria clear then the one more thing and that is the third mechanism third mechanism of the ribosomal alteration and that is the most important you should know you know some of these bacteria produce yes they produce special enzyme and this enzyme produces a special cover this produces methylation of yes this enzyme is methylase some bacteria produce this methylase and this lead to methylation of ribosome 50s subunit and 50s sub unit to be exact what is the site of methylation a specific adenine present on 23s ribosomal rna so what will happen that some bacteria they have acquired resistance by producing yes by activating ram gene R E M R E M gene. Re Erythromycin ribosomal methylase gene. A gene which produces enzyme. R E M gene is a gene which produces enzymes. Right. This is called R E M gene or erythrocyte ribosomal methylation. It has action. so first it was discovered in those bacteria which has developed resistance to erythromycin right so this what what this gene was doing it was leading to 
it was present in some bacteria which were previously susceptible to erythromycin but once they developed acquired this gene vertically or horizontally that will study in bacterial genetics once this gene is present in a bacteria it will lead produce an enzyme which will lead to yes what is it methylation of methylation of specific adenine on 23 s ribosomal rna which is part of the yes 50s ribosome and once it is methylated right then these drugs especially clindamycin or macrolide cannot bind their well and if they cannot bind their well that will lead to resistance that will lead to resistance now first concept even though originally this gene was discovered in some resistant bacteria which were resistant originally to the erythromycin but later on these bacteria also developed resistance to some other macrolide also right this was cross resistance within the same class of antibiotic but now we know that rm gene can also be present in bacteria which were previously susceptible to clindamycin now those bacteria are not only resistant to erythromycin they are also resistant to clindamycin why because if this site this site is altered it is methylated if it is methylated then what will happen to methylated site clindamycin does not bind i just remember methyl group is something like fatty or oily so what will happen clinda will slip from there will not bind in the same way macrolide also slip and come into this area and produce trouble but they don't work well so if i am the 23s ribosomal rna these were my active domain here the primary attachment of these drugs either surrounding proteins are altered or a specific adenine is itself mutant some other nucleotide is there or adenine is methylated by an enzyme due to these changes we will say the target site of clindamycin or erythromycin is altered and there is reduced affinity for the drugs to bind and bacteria will become resistant to the action of such drugs is that right now this is very important to understand that if there is a group of bacteria and they are resistant to erythromycin and mechanism of resistance is methylation of the ribozyme then be sure these bacteria if you give them clindamycin even they will be resistant very soon they will be resistant to clindamycin why because binding site for clindamycin and macrolide is almost overlapping right for, uh, we will not talk about chloramphenicol because that is not being used commonly systemically right now we will mainly i'm focusing now clinda and erythro so not only because of their binding sites due to their mechanism of action they overlap the binding site not only they have competitive and inhibition of each other another important thing if this become altered what is this 23s if the site become abnormal for example a man unfortunately even though however successful that was if he developed schizophrenia do you think ladies will be interested no in the same way if this is altered this site becomes schizophrenic either its surrounding protein is altered or its adenine specific adenine is altered then rna is altered or rna is methylated under all these circumstances these such bacteria will become resistant to clindamycin and erythromycin but if you cannot remember all this at least remember 
that aram gene which was originally discovered in erythromycin that can be even induced by erythromycin right that aram gene produces ribosomal uh, erythromycin ribosomal methylases but actually these methylases are not only for erythromycin if they methylate specific adenine of what is this 23s ribosome if these methylases are present and ribosomal these sites are methylated not only macrolides will fail even clindamycin will fail is that right so we learn two things here that due to okay let me tell you if you give try erythromycin first and bacteria have become resistant there are more chances when you give clindamycin bacteria will become resistant to clindamycin also but reverse is less common but important thing here is you to have to remember that if some bacteria are resistant to erythromycin due to methylation of target site then they will have cross resistance to the clindamycin as well if we give the clindamycin is it clear so now we know competitive inhibition we know uh, that clindamycin can reduce toxins and also what is cross resistance let's talk about post antibiotic effect post antibiotic effect is that in vitro in the lab let's suppose you are growing the bacterial colonies and if you give one for example you give clindamycin right bacterial growth stop but if you remove the clindamycin totally or go to less than minimal inhibitory concentration what we expect the bacteria will surviving bacteria which was just inhibited to proliferate should start proliferating but for few hours they still remain stuck in to non proliferative state again i'm saying that in vitro in the suppose in a petri dish or in a culture you are growing bacteria and then you give erythromycin or clindamycin especially clindamycin i'm focusing right or erythromycin it happens in both cases you give macrolide or clindamycin after exposure of bacteria to such antibiotic bacterial proliferation because there's bacteriostatic effect more commonly so bacterial proliferation will stop if you remove these drugs ideally we expect as soon as bacterial removal a bacteria sorry a removal of the these drugs will be there bacteria should proliferate but usually for few hours they remain non proliferative why antibiotic is no more there but still antibiotic action is there this is called post antibiotic effect that you work Expo bacteria was exposed or were exposed to the antibiotic but now antibiotic is removed or less than minimum inhibitory concentration still bacteria remain inhibited in protein synthesis or inhibited in their proliferation this is called post antibiotic effect the mechanism of this is there are many mechanism but right now the relevant mechanism is that clindamycin or macrolide once they bind with the target site with ribozyme once they bind with there if you remove the concentration uh, amount of the drug in the environment they will not easily detach they will remain attached there for long time and that will create inhibition of protein synthesis even after the drug has been removed from the environment because some drug remain sticking on the ribosomal target area with peptidyl transferase because some drug remain there for longer time so it is producing post antibiotic bacteriostatic action now this is clinically important because it happens clindamycin and erythromycin they do produce post antibiotic effect in our body also not right in biological in vivo system for example 
if you give a person clindamycin one single dose but heavy dose then significant amount of clindamycin will be binding with bacterial ribosomes 50s unit 23s ribosomal rna ribozyme peptidyl transfer rna right now if this clindamycin you don't repeat the dose and clindamycin is catabolized and eliminated and in the our extracellular fluid clindamycin concentration become less than inhibitory concentration minimum inhibitory concentration still for few hours bacteria will remain inhibited so in vivo also we see post antibiotic effect with many antibiotic including the clindamycin and macrolide and specially i will not mention the mechanism now because the other mechanisms also uh, post antibiotic effect is specially seen in amino glycosides clinically it is important you know why because this can this concept understanding can lead to that we reduce increase the dose and decrease the frequency of the drug the in between the two doses even if drug falls below the minimum inhibitory concentration in the blood still at bacterial level at ribosomal level it is still producing its effect right so it help us to design the more interval in between the doses and increasing the compliance of the patient right now another thing after all this discussion let me tell you some important things about clindamycin right i will focus on that up to now i have only told that clindamycin act on the ribosomes and reduces protein synthesis and whatever proteins are produced either they are less in amount or they are distorted but it produce many secondary effects let's focus on that now we will go to clindamycin what actions occur due to clindamycin altering the protein synthesis either reducing the production of proteins like reducing the toxic different toxins or producing distorted protein let's suppose here is the bacteria here is bacteria and here are yes this is ribosome and here is your what and here is let's suppose what is sitting there one leg here one leg there what is it clindamycin so clindamycin now i will tell you step by step what can it do what it can do we can start from here clindamycin mycin right number 1 of course it lead to the inhibition of tell me rapidly protein synthesis no i will not go into detail we have done it many times just say that by inhibiting the protein synthesis it is leading to reduced quantity of quantity of proteins and also producing whatever proteins are produced might be distorted distorted now this may result into few things if proteins which are produced if they are abnormal and reduced number 1 proliferation will fail so they may produce bacteriostatic action and in some cases if their dose is higher and in some bacteria they can be even bacterio sidal another thing bacterio static action occur due to failure of production of proteins which are related with proliferation bacterio sidal action occur when so severe disruption of protein synthesis occur bacteria is unable to sustain its life then once it is producing in some bacteria bacterio static action it does produce some other actions also for example it will lead to changes in membrane bacterial surface bacterial surface will be altered surface proteins will be proteins altered now if surface proteins are altered two things will occur if surface bacteria proteins are altered 
then those proteins which play a role in binding of bacteria with the human tissue or human cell if those proteins are reduced or altered then adherence of bacteria will be less and if bacteria are less adherence then what will happen bacterial virulence bacterial ability to produce pathogenicity will be reduced so bacterial surface proteins when they are altered that may re result into reduced adherence adherence to human tissue or reduced pathogenicity due to reduced virulence then if surface proteins are altered that might those altered proteins might help in opsonization so there may be increased increased opsonization and that may lead to increase what phagocytosis phagocytosis of bacteria by neutrophils and macrophages lindamycin is not going to forgive number one it does not allow the bacteria to proliferate and due to altered protein they are unable to adhere well to human tissue but they are increasing the adhesion between bacteria and phagocytes and increasing the due to opsonizing action increase phagocytosis and if bacteria enter into neutrophil and macrophages more bad news for bacteria you know what are those bad news clindamycin loves to concentrate into phagocytes so concentration of clindamycin as compared to extracellular fluid is more in neutrophils and macrophages so intracellular killing is also more effective that will lead to increased intracellular killing why because there is increased active uptake active uptake of clinda by phagocytes by neutrophils and neutrophils and macrophages so it is a big tragedy that number one this is unable to take up the it is unable to take up the uh, uh, bind with our own protein uh, cells and it is more opsonized and phagocytosed by phagocytes and then this drug is concentrating within the phagocytes and intracellular killing is more active and right killing is intracellular killing is more effective right then another advantage of this section because this drug actively concentrate in what actively concentrate in neutrophils and macrophages due to this reason clindamycin also very well concentrate in abscesses so it is very effective in abscesses produced by the susceptible bacteria right actually clindamycin is very effective in penetration of most of tissue and it's specially well concentrated into bones so infections in bone osteomyelitis their clindamycin is very effective to manage the susceptible organism but while i'm saying this thing you must remember one thing there's one tissue where it does not penetrate because it cannot cross blood brain barrier if there is infection in central nervous system or abscess in central nervous system clinda will fail right now after all these discussions that we have talked about what clinda produce reduce protein synthesis bacteriostatic action sometimes bactericidal altered surface will lead to more opsonization less adherence to the human cells less pathogenicity less virulent bacteria but unfortunately more better opsonized more phagocytosed intracellular killing due to concentration of the clindamycin in the neutrophils not only intracellular killing due to this concentration this drug also is well concentrated in the abscesses where neutrophils then accumulate right and with that i said that this drug is well concentrated in most tissues especially in the bones and one tissue which you should remember where it fails and that is clindamycin fails in crossing the blood brain barrier so uh, it should not be used in case of central nervous system abscesses but all these thing now i tell you the most important about, thing about the clindamycin 
when we talk about clindamycin when it comes in our mind that we should use clindamycin for our patient we should remember black box warning against it what is black box warning actually fda fda from us has a black box warning against the clindamycin that warning is that if you give your patient clindamycin and patient develops diarrhea sometimes usually this diarrhea is mild to moderate sometimes it can be very dangerous pseudomembranous colitis and may lead to fatal colitis right that is called what black box warning why because it is not only with clindamycin but it is more often with clindamycin many antibiotics do it most of the antibiotics which kill most of the bacteria in gastrointestinal system especially in the lower gut but if this if these antibiotics fail to kill the clostridioides yes difficile c c def if they fail to kill the clostridium difficile or new name is clostridioides difficile what will happen when most of the other bacteria are killed clostridioides difficile will over proliferate right and if they over proliferate some of them are highly toxigenic they produce toxin a and b and they produce sometimes if toxin is produced in small amount that may produce only mild diarrhea right or moderate diarrhea and cramps and fever and all those things but in some patients they produce the strain of the clostridioides difficile they are hypertoxigenic hypertoxigenic mean they produce massive amount, amount of what toxin a and b they that may produce very severe inflammation in colon we also call it pseudo membranous colitis sometimes that may lead to mega colon and we have to do sometimes to save the life to save the life of the patient we might need to do colectomy and if we have not been careful in such patients uh, in see such serious patient it may end up into death so before you know anything about clindamycin you must remember this drug can produce very serious side effects that is pseudo membranous colitis but so whenever you prescribe clindamycin first of all you should take history that patient don't have recent or previous history of anti antibiotic induced diarrhea or patient was not recently in hospitalized from where he might has acquired the clostridium difficile or patient are not more than 65 years old they have more chances to develop uh, this cdf associated colitis or tell the patient that if you uh, after all the precautions still if you decide to give this drug tell the patient if he develops diarrhea he should immediately contact you rather before even contacting you he should stop the medicine right in most of the mild to moderate cases stopping the medicine and appropriately producing diarrhea will be enough right but preferably you stop the drug and if diarrhea is getting serious you should use drugs which are specifically can help to kill the clostridium difficile right here the most rather least expensive drug is of course metronidazole right but now we have some better drugs we can use also vancomycin and this another new drug which is now very number one was metro in c def associated colitis number one metro especially in poor countries nidazole right or you can use vancomycin i will not going to detail but just i thought i should mention it or a newer drug is fidoxa fidoxe sin fidoxa sin right so what i wanted to yes you want to say something fidoxa mycin so fidoxa yes me mycin no mycin right now again i will repeat whenever you are planning to give the clindamycin before we 
you go ahead you must assess the patient and need of this drug related with black box warning that is that this drug like many other antibiotics can produce antibiotic associated diarrhea especially uh, c diff associated colitis or diarrhea because clostridium difficile is resistant to this drug clindamycin and if that over proliferate usually it produces mild to moderate diarrhea but in some cases it can produce very severe pseudo membranous colitis or mega colon or even it can be fatal right so you need to advise the patient first of all advise yourself you only give clindamycin where it is really very very necessary and you don't have safer option or better option number 2 if you are giving tell the patient that he should be alert if he develops diarrhea and if patient develop diarrhea tell him to stop the drug or you ask him to stop the drug and then you can choose which drug you can try to yes kill this pseudo membranous colitis or c diff associated colitis metronidazole can be there used vancomycin can be used but now fidoxa mycin is more commonly used if patient can afford it because it's relative, relatively expensive drug i hope it was a good discussion thank you very much class dismissed bye bye